Welcome everyone! In this video, we are going to be diving into my ultimate tier list for the Great League Season 13 Edition. Now, it's been quite some time since I have done one of these. Uh, it's been a, been a long time, actually. Actually, a couple of seasons now. Uh, so I thought with the Open Great League uh, set to come back uh, later on this week, I thought, why not do another uh, updated tier list for the current Great League meta? Um, so uh, a lot of you are already familiar with how these things go. We have the various tiers, uh, S tier being the best, D tier uh, being the not so best. So uh, we will be ranking all of the Pokemon in the meta right now uh, from S tier right on down to D tier. So with all that said, let's dive right into this, guys. And first up, we've got Obama Snow. Obama Snow is actually pretty decent. Uh, it actually core breaks, uh, to a certain extent, the ever so powerful Knocked Owl Lantern core. Although, that's really its best use. So, uh, for that reason, we're going to go with B tier for Obama Snow. Very good, very solid, um, and very useful as it does break up that very powerful and commonly used core that we're seeing. And up next, we've got good old Altaria. My goodness, guys, this thing is S tier for sure, 100%. Especially this season, um, with the uh, drop off of the powerful, large, and cuddly walrus known as Walrein. You don't see too many of those these days, which uh, makes Altaria even more of a threat in this current meta. The reason why is due to its bulk. Uh, has Dragon Breath with Stab. Even in a lot of matchups where it's not supposed to be doing so well, it's still doing quite well, uh, and that is the power of Altaria. S tier for sure for Altaria. Next up, we've got the large tanky spider. I think this thing has seen better days. Uh, it's D tier. Uh, sorry, Araquanid, but you are D tier, my friend. The reason why is because it's although it has an amazing stat product, uh, it's it's typing in this meta is not the meta. Let's just say the meta is very hostile to its typing, and the move set is a bit underwhelming. I might I must say um, I think they uh, they sort of handicapped it a little bit. I think I would think for fear of the stat product, they uh, didn't give it the most ideal moveset i mean this thing actually has access to lunge has an ac has access to uh, a, a lot of different moves that uh would make it a lot more relevant much like how altaria is um but unfortunately it does not have the moves and the typing is a little um a little rough uh, let's just say it's not having fun when it's faced up against the powerful lantern knocked out core let's just say that and then um so yeah, D tier for Araquanid. And next we've got Aurorus. Man, this one's a bit tricky, but honestly, guys, Aurorus and the Great League, uh, it's kind of D tier, guys. Um, reason why is because the moveset uh, is great fantastic moveset but it loses quite a bit of bulk when you bring it down to the great league format it shines best in the ultra league uh where it, it gains quite a bit more bulk and can hang in there long enough to really actually threaten with those massive meteor beams uh so uh, open great league it's d tier not not the best uh right now although it does answer knocked owl very well but uh, that's about all it can really uh, handle. Maybe maybe a Powder Snow A9 to an extent. So D tier for Aurorus. Azumarill, good old Azumarill. Man, I'm going to go ahead and say A tier. Um, it's not used as, as often, but my goodness. Azumarill is still Azumarill at the end of the day. I think the heightened use of Lantern has really discouraged a lot of use of Azumarill. But it, it, it can still definitely do the, do some things, especially uh, if you have the right moveset. Like if you have Hydro Pump, you can really threaten the very strong steel types like Stunfisk and Basti. And that bulk cannot be denied. Azumarill dropped off a bit. It, it was once S tier, but it's, it's, it's fallen off a little bit. Down to A tier, still not too bad in my opinion. Next, we got Basti, good old Bastiodon. Man, oh, it kind of floats between A and B tier. 
I'm going to go ahead and say A tier. Um, and the reason why is because there are so many darn flyers in the meta right now. Bastiodon handles them beautifully. It does what it does very well, and it really uh, struggles at what it doesn't do very well. It's a very inflexible Pokemon, but that insanely high stat product is what pushes it over the edge. It could even drop down to B tier. It's sort of a tweener, I would say, but we're going to roll with A tier for now. Basti still very good. Handles Noctowl quite well and can absolutely hold its own against Lantern. And up next, we've got Beedrill. Oh, guys, you I think you guys can see. Beedrill's a bit D tier. Uh, it has a place, sort of an anti-meta type of pick. Can threaten the steel types uh, with uh, drill runs. Um, but the stat product is not quite there. Um, and it will struggle against all of the flyers in the meta. The meta is just a little bit hostile to bug types as a whole at the moment. Um, so yeah, B drills, D tier. Same goes for Buzzwool, as I mentioned. Uh, the meta is very, very hostile to bug types and uh, Buzzwool. There is no exception there, although can do quite well against uh, Pokemon like Stunfisk. Uh, can can hold its own a little bit to Bastiodon. Um, especially if you can get a shield advantage and start ripping off those superpowers, but it has very limited use and function in the current meta as a whole. And we've got Charizard. Charizard is C tier in the Open Great League and the Specialty Cups. That's a bit of a different story, but we are evaluating the Open Great League and the stat product, guys, is just not there for good old Charizard. Despite the uh, overpowered Wing Attack plus uh, um, Blast Burn combination, uh, when shields are up, it's just it's just really going to struggle, especially against titans of the meta right now, like Lantern, uh, G Fisk uh, really causes some problems, and Bastiodon's a problem. So Charizard, very good, uh, solid C tier um, Pokemon in the Open Great League, and then we've got good old Chestnut. Chestnut, man, I'm going to say C tier. Um, it's good. Again, it's got a limited function. It's really only good for dominating Stunfisk and uh, uh, Bastiodon to an extent. Uh, dominates those two Pokemon quite well. Keeps those in check very well. Uh, also, Lantern. Handles Lantern quite well, uh, which... I should probably be putting it up a little bit higher, but there are so many darn flyers. The flyers are everywhere, guys. So, uh, yeah, that makes it a bit hostile to uh, Chestnut. So it's a solid C-tier Pokemon. And up next, we've got Cofagrigus. I'm going to say C-tier for Cofagrigus. Uh, has a lot of uh, neutral play across the board. I just really wish it had a bait move. I think that would catapult it maybe up to the higher B and maybe even A tier. Um, I don't know if it can learn Psychic Fangs or something like Night Slash, but it's really missing out on that bait move. But it can hang in there. It still holds its own, and that's due to its bulk. has very nice bulk. Uh, but having access to only nuke moves uh, and the way the meta is now, a lot of knock dolls everywhere uh, kind of uh, hurts Cofagrigus a bit so very solid c tier pokemon maybe even b tier could could uh get by with b tier but we're gonna we're gonna roll with c tier for now for Cofagrigus. and up next we've got chrysalia chrysalia is actually a solid b tier pokemon um it, i'm surprised that it's not used uh, utilized as much as it probably should be has has insane bulk uh yes it does lose quite a bit of bulk coming down from the ultra league but it maintains a lot of that bulk as well and can hang with the best of them in the open great league has excellent coverage with the legacy uh charge move of grass knot um and yeah i think i'm honestly surprised that we don't see it quite as much especially with the drop off of all the ghost types uh sableye usage has dropped off quite a bit uh, Trevenant usage has dropped off quite a bit uh, due to all of the Noctowls being introduced into the meta. So very interesting. Um, solid B-tier Pokemon there. Not sure why it's not used as much as it should be. Then we've got uh, DD, good old Defense Worm Deoxys. Solid A-tier Pokemon. Very powerful in the meta. 
uh, has excellent uh, bait potential with the psych- uh, Psycho Boost with Stab. Has excellent coverage in the form of Thunderbolt. Uh, you could go Rock Slide in some circumstances. I think Rock Slide's better suited for specialty cups. Um, but having access to Thunderbolt, you can really threaten those Noctowls, hit those Lanterns for neutral damage. Uh, Thunderbolt is what allows you to beat Azumarill in the two shield. Uh, quite easily uh, as well as the one shield i believe so yeah dd very strong and solid handles the steel type leads as well particularly bastiodon and reggie steel handles those two quite well it does struggle against stunfisk uh, and that's just because the charge moves are all resisted but my goodness even with that it can still hang in there with g-fisk as long as you're able to give up a shield uh, and next we've got Dugong. Dugong, man, C tier. It's it's decent. It's just very limited. It's limited in both its typing and moveset. This thing, again, much like Kafagrigus, really needs a strong uh, bait move or a fast activating charge uh, charge charge attack. Excuse me. That's a lot more viable than something like Aqua Jet. Um, I don't know if it can learn Weather Ball, Water, or Ice, or if it can learn uh, surf i'm not sure if it can learn those types of moves but it really needs something like that uh you give it something like that and my goodness this thing with its bulk it's shooting up into the stratosphere i would say but for now uh that's where it stands solid c tier uh very solid specialty cup type of pokemon and next we've got diggersby in the open man uh it's just rough it's hard. I, I, man, I want to put Diggers be higher, but Noctowls, Altaria's everywhere. Uh, even Pokemon like Lantern can really um, put up a fight against Diggers be. Uh, so yeah, Diggers be is a really strong anti-steel uh, Pokemon uh, stat product for days, but the meta is just a little bit hostile to diggers be at that's this is another one that i really think uh needs uh some new additions to its move pool i think something like a thunder punch ice punch it it learns brutal swing as well if it can get something like that to really fight back against those strong flyers diggers be would uh would shoot up quite a bit and next we've got dragon air dragon air hmm very interesting it's gonna sort of float between c and d tier but i'm gonna go d tier um dragon air is very strong much more of a specialty cup type of pokemon but uh, with Pokemon like uh, Metacham uh, running rampant, Stunfisk to an extent, Basti, uh, it just kind of falls flat a little bit, unfortunately, for Dragonair. Solid D-tier Pokemon, much more better suited for the specialty cups with its current moveset. And next we've got Double, Double, quite solid, solid B-tier Pokemon. Very strong normal type, uh, has uh, amazing charge moves, has access to wild charge. You can hit those flyers and those water types pretty darn hard. And lest we forget, the body slam spam is in full force with a Pokemon like Double. Uh, provides excellent excellent bait opportunity, allows you to get to a, a decent move with stab. Uh, if you're in the pinch, you know, depending on the shielding scenario, Double solid B tier Pokemon. And we've got Frostlass. I'm going to say Frostlass is another solid B-tier Pokemon. Handles the Flyers beautifully. Um, It can even fight against Stunfisk. Put up a fight against G-Fisk. It's one Achilles heel is going to be Bastiodon and Lantern in in this current meta. And um, But yeah, other than that, handles Metacham very well as well. Uh, Depending on the Shield Link scenario, can put Trevenant uh, in some tough spots. So... Frostless, very, very strong and solid B tier Pokemon. Galvantula, very interesting. Um, I'm going to say this is a. It kind of floats between B and C tier. Oh man, got to make a decision here. I'm going to say D tier. Uh, too many Stunfisk uh, l- running rampant in this meta. It does handle Noctowl quite well, I will say, but we've got Altarias everywhere. It's just a little too squishy to uh, warrant propping it up into the B tier, but very strong. If you can put a solid backline behind it on the lead 
or as a closer and preserve shields for it, it can absolutely put in some work. But for now, solid C tier, I'm going to say. And the same goes for Gliscor, uh, particularly in its shadow form. Very strong Pokemon, again, but... Uh, with that ground typing, it's got, it really struggles against the strong flyers in this meta. Um, but can put in work against Pokemon like Metacham, handles the steel types quite well. Um, and can do it can put in some work against Lantern as well, depending on the shielding scenario. So solid C tier, I'm going to say. And uh, Golbat, uh, seen better days. They're just better flyers. It's, it's a solid D tier Pokemon, more of an anti-meta pick. But with the drop-off of a lot of the Charmers due to the nerf to Charm, uh, it's not seeing as much usage or a need for it in the meta as of now. Solid D-tier Pokemon. And uh, the same is going to go for Guzzlord. Guzzlord's much, in my humble opinion, much more suited for the specialty cups. Uh, the meta is just a little too hostile to, uh, to Guzzlord, although it can, can put up a fight against Lantern. Uh, it just gets really hard walled by the fairies, of course. Um, the uh, strong steel types like Bastiodon, unless we forget the uh, the overpowered Metachams in this meta, um, it can struggle a little bit. I think it's much more suited for the specialty cups at the moment. And Jumpluff, Jumpluff, pretty decent. I'm gonna say solid C tier Pokemon. Very solid. Uh, can put up a fight against Lantern uh, with the uh, addition of Fairy Wind into its move pool. Makes it quite, quite solid overall. Uh, can do very well against the uh, Metachams and Lanterns. Of course, with the Community Day move of Acrobatics, uh, it can do some things and has an amazing stat product for the meta. Solid C tier Pokemon, I would say. And Como O is D tier, unfortunately. Um, Again, it's it's kind of in a hard spot. Just dragons as a whole, unless your name is Altaria. If you're a dragon, you're not you're not doing so great in this meta. And the reason why is because a lot of the dragons are much better suited for uh, higher CP limit um, metas like the Ultra League, like the Master League. A lot of them can cap out well over three thousand in terms of stat product. And when you drop them down to the uh, Great League format, they just lose quite a bit of bulk. And uh, the meta is already quite hostile to Dragon types in general. And I think that just speaks volumes for Altaria. So Como O, solid D tier. And then we've got Lantern. Lantern is S tier for sure. The reason why it's so darn re uh, meta relevant right now is obviously because it, it, it was able to uh, get Surf. Uh, when its move pool was updated, but with the introduction of all of the flyers, courtesy of the wing attack update for season 13, that has uh, made Lantern quite valuable in this meta. It was quite good last season, but uh, it's even better now with the introduction of all the new flyers into the meta. So Lantern, S tier for sure. Licky Tongue has seen better days, my friends. It's still a solid B tier Pokemon. That that uh, The bulk on Licky Tongue just cannot be denied, my goodness. Um, and it has very strong neutral play across the board can hold its own against Pokemon like Altaria. It just really struggles up against opposing strong normal types in this meta, like Knocked Owl. Um, it, it can fall short a little bit against uh, equally as bulky Pokemon, such as Umbreon or Stunfisk. Um, and of course, there are meta champs everywhere, but Licky Tongue still has a place, can still do some things. The bulk just cannot be denied. And then we've got Lurantis. Lurantis is very interesting. I'm going to say it's a solid C tier Pokemon. Um, it has a very solid and effective moveset. Handles Lantern quite well. Not known for its bulk, uh, Lantern, or excuse me, Lurantis. Not known for its bulk, but my goodness, it makes up for that with its moveset. Quite spammy with the Fury Cutter, Super Power, Leaf Blade combination. That's quite lethal. It's just hard, hard to call, hard to run it in this meta with all the flyers, but can do well against Basti, can do well against Stunfisk, uh, and of course Lantern as well. Machamp, man. Machamp is just not not a top tier fighting type. Uh, I think when you have when you have options of uh, Pokemon like Metacham, Scrafty, 
defense form Deoxys, the pseudo fighters like DD and Obstagoon, Machamp is just uh, not not cutting it in this meta, unfortunately. Very strong as a shadow, but I think much better suited for the specialty cups. Uh, there are just much better fighting type options to go for. And then we've got uh, Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz is a decent D tier Pokemon, um, especially with uh, the drop off of the Charmers. Mandibuzz uh, can really put in some work in this meta. Quite bulky. Can uh, hold its own against Pokemon like uh, Altaria. Handles DD quite well as well. It's bulky enough to withstand the uh, Thunderbolt or Rock Slides and still spam off those foul plays quite fast. Can even hold its own against Metacham depending on the shielding scenario. So Mandibuzz, solid B tier Pokemon. And the same goes for uh, Mantine. Mantine, quite bulky, has the same stat product or very similar to uh, Skarmory. Very bulky Pokemon, uh, and with the wing attack buff, that just made it even better because it's able to get to those uh, hard-hitting ice beams quite fast and can spam off those bubble beams at a very fast rate, debuffing your opponent and uh, really putting in the work with the uh, new wing attack buff there. So solid B tier, I would say. Just keep it far and away from those lanterns. Um, and then we've got Alolan Marowak. Man, the meta is just very hostile to fire types. It's I'm going to say this is a solid C tier Pokemon at this point. Again, it's a shame to see because uh, once once upon a time, this Pokemon was hardcore top tier meta. It's just not cutting it these days. The meta just as a whole is just very hostile to fire types. Um, and then we've got knocked owls everywhere. Uh, Alolan Marowak has seen better days for sure. Still a very solid C tier Pokemon, I would say. Then we've got Metacham, the goat Metacham, my goodness. Oh man, this thing is so strong. I'm a massive fan of, of Metacham. Many of you all may know by now. I absolutely adore Metacham. It does things that it just has no business doing uh, in the meta, winning matchups that it has no business winning. Um, yeah, what more can we say about Metacham? It is S tier for sure, 100%. Very strong Pokemon. And then we've got uh, Meganium. Meganium, I'm going to say, is uh, it's kind of floats between B and C tier, but... Man, I'm going to say due to the stat product, it, I'm going to say B tier. It's a solid B tier grass type in my opinion. And that's because it's bulky. It's one of the bulkier grass types that we have in this entire meta. Uh, can really handle a lot of the steel types that are not named um, Reggie Steel quite well. And even still with the coverage of Earthquake can still put in work against Reggie Steel. Uh, depending on a number of circumstances. So Meganium often slept on in this meta. We just got to keep it away from those strong flyers. But if you want to go grass, Meganium's not a bad choice. And then we've got Alolan Ninetales, A tier. I'm going to say for sure, Alolan Ninetales, even with the charm nerf, still very strong. Still able to handle the meta champs uh, quite well. He keeps Altaria in check. Uh, you could even switch it up and run Powder Snow as well and still uh, do quite well. Uh, Powder Snow gives it a better chance up against Pokemon like um, Stunfisk. Uh, so yeah, um, Alolan Ninetales, quite flexible, quite quite good, very good stat product as well. Uh, and that's not saying the same for its Kanto counterpart, the original Ninetales. Um, yeah. Just fire types are just not, they're just not where it's at right now. I'm sorry to say, guys. Um, but probably the strongest fire type in the meta, I will say. Um, very, very strong. It's a lot bulkier than most fire types that we see in this meta. It's just the meta is way too hostile towards it. Um, and in neutral matchups, like against Metacham, it just struggles. Uh, the, the counter damage with stab from Medi is just too much for uh, Pokemon like uh, Kanto Ninetales. And we've got Lanterns all over the place. It's just not a fun time for the fire types, guys. Then we've got Noctowl S tier for sure. The premier flyer right up there with Altaria. Those are those are the best flyers that you can run in the meta right now. Noctowl, insanely powerful. Um, it can even hold its own against match um, Pokemon that it has no business holding its own against. Like uh, if you had a certain breakpoint, 
you actually win the one shield versus stun fisk that's not supposed to happen with a flying type uh, that's just the power of knocked owl uh the uh, introduction of shadow ball not too long ago uh, really put that thing over the edge and um the wing attack buff just shot it right up into the stratosphere knocked out uh, s tier for sure then we've got obstagoon i'm gonna say is a tier guys obstagoon very strong very strong it kind of kind of right now as of now floats between a and b tier uh, but i'm gonna i'm gonna go a tier uh, a very strong pseudo fighter a very strong anti-ghost type pokemon in this meta can uh, do quite well in its neutral matchups. We just really have to keep that thing away from the opposing counter users, of course. If you can avoid those, uh, Obstagoon can absolutely put in the work. Uh, solid A tier, normal slash dark type, I would say for sure. And speaking of A tier, Pelipper, very, very, very good right now. Uh, solid A tier for sure. My goodness. Uh, the wing attack buff really put Pelipper right back on the map. It fell off for a couple of seasons due to weather ball being nerfed, but they more than made it made up for that with the wing attack buff. Um, yeah, Pelipper very strong, not the bulkiest. Uh, it's, it's an A tier Pokemon, uh, flying type Pokemon, but, um, I would say third best overall in this meta right now. And speaking of flyers, Pidgeot, oh man, C tier. It's a C tier flyer. It's just a little awkward to use, unfortunately. Yes, it did benefit from the wing attack buff, uh, as well as all of the other Pokemon that have access to it. It's just, it's handicapped by its moveset. It only has flying type moves. And if you're stuck up against the steel type, you are absolutely crying. My goodness. Uh, and it's a little bit awkward with them. Uh, um nerfing the um feather dance uh, i think if they hadn't nerfed feather dance it would be quite a bit higher but it's just a little awkward to use especially in the great league you can pull some things out in the open um ultra league in the ultra league metas you can do quite well with it um but it struggles i think in this meta right now and then we've got polytoad i'm really not sure why we don't see too many of these most likely due to lantern uh coming to relevance but it, it's it's pretty solid, still as spammy as it's ever been, very strong, uh, just struggles a little bit. There are better water types to choose in this meta, unfortunately. Same goes for Polyrath, although it's, it's even lower, guys. Polyrath is D tier. Uh, there are just better fighting types, better water types to use. Uh, Polyrath, unfortunately, D tier, much better suited for the special D cups, let's just say that. And we've got Reggie Steel, A tier for sure. It used to be S tier, my goodness, before that nerf, but the nerf knocked it down to knocked it down a little bit, brought it back down to earth a little bit, but let's let's not uh let's make no mistake about it. It's still very powerful. It addresses all of the flyers quite well uh, and can do well against everything else in between outside of the very strong fighters and even fighting types like Metacham. If they don't have power up punch, they struggle and they have to give up shields to Registeel. Very powerful steel type in the meta. Then we've got Runarigus. Man, Runarigus, I think it's a... Uh, it's... Uh, man... Yeah, it's D tier, guys. I'm sorry to say. It's good. It's decent. Um, but it's a little awkward. A um, little awkward. Uh, with Pokemon like Knocked Owl uh, all over the place. Even Pokemon like Lantern, especially if it has Water Gun, can absolutely put in work against it, which uh, shouldn't really be the case. Yeah, unfortunately. Runarigus, I think, much better suited for the specialty cups. And we've got good old Sableye. My goodness, this hurts me, but it's B tier at the moment. It's a B tier uh, uh, ghost slash dark type. And the problem is, is that um, there aren't as many Nido Queens um, to contend with for Sableye. So that the usage and, and that combined with the rise of a Noctowl has really uh, bumped Sable, Sableye down a, a, a notch. It still, still has some use, but the use is a little bit more limited now. Uh, and then we've got Scrafty. Scrafty here is going to be a solid B tier, uh, much like Sableye. Very strong. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, too many flyers, too many Altarias running rampant. 
um, but it can still put in the work for sure. There aren't as many charmers, which makes makes it a lot more useful right now in the meta. Nido queens have dropped completely off of the map. Nido queens not even in this, guys. It's so irrelevant. It's so unfortunate. Nido queens not even included in the tier list whatsoever. Nido queen is so irrelevant, and uh, so yeah. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> but yeah, uh, I just went off on a Needle Queen tangent. But uh, yeah, Scrafty, very solid, very solid. Um, but I find myself using Obstagoon. If I had my choice, I generally go Obstagoon over Scrafty, and for that reason, it's a B tier Pokemon. Next, we've got uh, Skarmory. Skarmory, solid B tier as well. I uh, had a lot of use back when uh, we had a lot of Nido Queens all over the place, um, but we don't, so it's not 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 necessary at the moment. Uh, plus, all of the Lanterns being introduced into the meta, and we, then we've got a lot more Steel types as well to counter the Noctels and Altarias. Uh, they're just better Steel type options, better Flying type options as well. B tier Flyer for sure. Then we've got. Um, Steelix. Steelix is D tier Pokemon. It's just plain and simple. It's a specialty type, uh, cup type of Pokemon. Basically, wherever G Fisk is not allowed, Steelix is going to fill that void. And that is what it comes down to, my friends, unfortunately. It's just there are better ground steel types in the form of Stun Fisk. Uh, Stun Fisk, excuse me. Speaking of. Which uh, is where we land on now. Stunfisk is S tier for sure. The premier steel type. The best steel type in the meta in my humble opinion. Very strong. Very powerful. Very bulky. Has an excellent moveset. What more can be said for Stunfisk? It is amazing, guys. And then we've got Swampert. Man, Swampert has seen better days. It was once S tier, but... It's dropped down a little bit with the introduction of the Knocked Owls and a lot more Altarias in the meta. Uh, but make no mistake, Swampert, still Swampert at the end of the day. Very strong Pokemon, A tier for sure. And we've got Tapu Fini. I think if you want a Water Fairy, just go with Zoom Roll, but it's a solid C tier, I would say. Little, it's got a different niche than a Zoom Roll does. Um, I think. I often find myself, you know, just using a zoom roll if I want that type of coverage. But still solid, can still do some things. Um, and then we've got Toxapex. Toxapex is a very solid man, it floats between B and C, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the respect of B tier. Um with Nido Queen falling off of the face of the planet, Toxapex has kind of filled that void if you want a nice poison jabber course it's not going to be doing as much poison jab damage because its attack is nowhere near a nato queen or shadow nato queen for that matter but the bulk cannot be denied uh so if you need a solid poison jabber i would say right now toxapex is the best one to go for making it a solid b tier pokemon then we've got uh toxicroak Solid C tier fighter, I would say. Uh, there are much better fighting type options. Uh, Toxicroak, just uh, again, not the not the not the most optimal fighting type. Much more better suited for the specialty cups, I will say. And we've got Trevenant. Although we've got Noctels everywhere, we've got all kinds of flyers everywhere. Trevenant is still S tier, one hundred percent, guys. If you if you have enough of an energy lead or shield advantage, you can actually get a knockdown quite low going straight seed bomb. That's the power of Trevenant. It just hits like a truck. This is literally the best ghost type right now, and the reason why is because it keeps Lantern in check, keeps Sable uh, or excuse me, uh, Metacham in check. Uh, though these three Pokemon, Lantern, Metajam, and Noctowl, are everywhere. And if you can cover two of those three with one Pokemon, that being Trevenant, Trevenant, Trevenant is the real deal for sure. S tier Ghost uh, slash Grass type for sure. And this brings us to uh, Tropius. Tropius, solid C tier Grass type slash Flyer. Sort of an anti meta pick, much like Jumpluff. Very similar uh, stats, very bulky. Uh, it just doesn't have the best fast moves, unfortunately. It doesn't have the best coverage move in the form of Aerial Ace, which really holds it back, I would say. And we've got Umbreon. Umbreon's a very strong A-tier dark type. Very strong dark type. Very solid. Uh, great generalist. 
I find myself using Umbreon quite a bit just because if it's not up against a fairy, it's usually doing very, very well. It's uh, very nice with the bulk. You're able to get things low and edge out certain matchups where that can really come in handy, setting up your closer to really uh, do some things in the end. Umbreon, solid backbone to any team comp. Uh, just about any team comp, I will say. And we've got Venusaur. Man, Venusaur, I would say... Oh man, yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put it at A tier. It's the it's the second best grass type in the meta. I'm gonna say. Um, so yeah, Venusaur, solid A tier. It uh it addresses all of the meta cham and lantern leads. Uh, if you can build around that and cover its flying type weakness in the back, you've got an amazing lead Pokemon that can really uh, put some heavy shield pressure on your opponents. And then we've got Vigoroth. Vigoroth, a uh, solid B tier normal type, I would say. One of the one of the better pseudo fighters. Right behind, I would say, Obstagoon and DD. Vigoroth has a very strong place. Um, if you wanna want a counter user, I think there are better options at this point in the open Great League, but it can absolutely put in work, especially in the specialty cups. What's holding Vigoroth back is um, lack of a better second uh, coverage move. Bulldoze, Brick Break, those are just not cutting it. If it gets something different, something better, it would it would actually uh, shoot it up quite a bit. But for now, solid B tier, I would say. And speaking of B tier, Wall Rain has seen better days, my goodness, uh, with lanterns everywhere. Uh, Metacham still very, uh, very much relevant. We've got these two strong steel types in the form of Bastiodon and Stunfisk uh, that have stepped up to address the Noctowls and Altarias. Uh, Wall Rain has just seen better days, my goodness, but still a very strong ice type. Still very strong, just not quite what it once was. And last but certainly not least, we've got Whiskash. They are just better groundwater types, guys. Uh, <laughs> Whiskash, much better much uh, better suited for the specialty cups. And I think you guys will understand why. But very strong ground type. It can do some things. Just uh, there are better options, um, most notably Swampert. And that about wraps it up, guys, uh, for my ultimate tier list for the Great League Season 13 edition i hope you guys enjoyed it did i get it right did i leave some things out did i forget some things Did i miss something or or do you agree 100 be sure to let me know and uh yeah i thought it was long overdue uh with the master league going on right now and the great league coming up very soon i thought why not um put this out today maybe uh inspire you guys and your uh, team building and preparations for the uh upcoming great league cycle great league is coming back this coming thursday so it should be a lot of fun but guys i had a blast i hope you all enjoyed as always i thank you for watching and keep up the grind thank you guys